Yo, 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 what's good, Karma Nation? It's your boy Tristan, aka Sriracha DFS, coming to you back again with another NBA DFS DraftKings picks video for December 28th on a Tuesday, 2021. If you're new here, please make sure to subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel so you, do not, so you do not miss out on any of our free media content or live streams. Also, make sure to like the video if you can. We appreciate it a lot. Um, also, make sure you're in our free chat room where we're discussing is DFS 24-7 all day, every day. We got DFS in there. We got sports bettings. We got props. We got crypto. We got all that jazz for you guys to try and make money. So please go ahead, join if you're interested. And with that being said, we have an eight-game slate on tap for this Tuesday. It's a pretty big Tuesday slate, I might add. We never really see uh, Tuesdays or Thursdays have these big slates, so it's good. It's interesting. Um, right before I jump into the slate talk, let's go over the uh, Karma Portal yesterday for, um, I guess, the results. We can go over the results for yesterday. Nathan Knight, one of the top values of the night. Highest karma value rating as well. Smashed. Um, I think this news or this was before the uh, train news was updated um, because it came out at such a late time. So obviously you see uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich from Atlanta who actually smashed, had 30 fantasy points. Um, Skyler Mays barely played. Josh Christopher, one of the duds of the night. David Nwaba smashed at his price. Kobe White, one of the duds of the night. Um, Nasir Little had 50 DK points. James Harden, um, I believe this is, uh, what's McCoy, um, from Atlanta, but he didn't, he wasn't that great because obviously Trey Young News should have bumped you off of all these Atlanta guys. Um, so if you think about it, there were two fails, you know, Josh Christopher, um, really bad, but I don't even want to talk about it, to be honest. Um, Kobe White also, um, pretty bad today. Uh, just because of the, the ball funneled through Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. But someone like Conchar, Derek White, um, Jordan Clarkson, Malik Beasley, Mason Plumley, Joe Ingles, Rozier, McDaniels. Um, I mean, I don't know what else more to say. All these, all those guys smashed their prices. Um, highest karma value. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, you would have cashed if you used mainly all these value plays. If you just avoided Josh Christopher and Kobe White. You would have cashed everything. Um, I guarantee you that. So, um, with that being said, good good results from the Karma Portal last night. Let's move on to tonight. Milwaukee at Orlando, first game on the slate. On the Milwaukee side, we only have Brooke Lopez out. So, Milwaukee, claps to you. You guys are fully healthy. I'm going to avoid all of you guys because you guys are super pricey. Um, and you're versing Orlando, who's missing a ton of people still. So, Cole Anthony's going to be out for Orlando. That's rough. Mo Bamba out, OKK out, Jalen Suggs, Markel Fultz, Terrence Ross, Carter Williams, BJ Johnson, Michael Mulder. All those guys are out. Um, I'm going to be looking at the value plays here. So I'm off Wendell Carter. I'm off France Wagner. I'm off Gary Harris. And the guys I will be on are, are the guys that um, will get a blowout run. So Mo Wagner probably sees blows out run. Probably sees blowout run. RJ Hampton might see a blowout run. Gravette might see blowout run. And RJ Hampton played good against Milwaukee last time. Um, obviously a different spot here. Honestly, could be in a better spot in my opinion. Um, I like him tomorrow. He's going to be a very good GPP play. And I got to remember, late news shouldn't talk you off your main original plays. Um, when Aiton got rolled out last night, I switched everything to Javale McGee. Um, what I did wrong there was forget that Mason Plumlee was in a similar spot with no PJ Washington, no Miles Bridges, and a better matchup where JaVale McGee was facing Steven Adams, which is not that bad, but it's going to be a tough matchup. And I mean, Mason Plumlee went nuts. I would have probably been top five in some things if I had Mason Plumlee over JaVale McGee, but it is what it is. You live and you learn. So RJ Hampton, got to remember that guy for tomorrow when all the news drops. Washington at Miami next game. We have uh, Bradley Beal questionable. Rui Hachimura questionable. Thomas Bryant out. Contavious Caldwell-Pope. Aaron Holiday. Raul Nato. Anthony Gill all out. So you're going to see a bump to uh, players like Danny Abdija. Um, they're going to be thin at the guard spot tomorrow. So you might see more Corey Kispert um, at the guard spot. Uh, along with Spencer Dinwiddie. Obviously their prices are getting a little higher and higher. Um, I probably wouldn't touch them there against a tough 
well, not too tough, but it's just a slow, slow-paced Miami team. I believe with Jimmy Butler back as well. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to be touching that. I like the Miami side, though. Um, Bam Adebayo, Kyle Lowry, Dwayne Dedmon, Oladipo, P.J. Tucker questionable. Uh, Markeith Moore still out. So if P.J. Tucker is still out, I'm going to be rolling with my guy Yurtsevin. Had a great game last time out. Um, love this spot for him here. Shouldn't be a tough spot for him, at least against this Washington um, big men. Um, so yeah, if P.J. Tucker's out, Yurtsevin in play for sure. Um, Tyler Hero didn't have that great of a game, barely played. Um, Jimmy Butler had a decent game. He screwed me in a bunch of props, but <laughs> this this game is made for him, this game environment at least. Washington's a slow-paced team. Um, Jimmy likes to attack the rim a lot. Um, Washington likes to foul a lot. Um, yeah, I like paying up for him there. Let's see how much he played. I do like Caleb Martin tomorrow. Caleb is a... Definitely a sneaky GPP play. Um, but he gave more minutes than Tyler Hero. That's interesting. Philly versus Toronto next game. Ben Simmons out. Andre Drummond out. Shake Milton and Danny Green out. So main guys here, Embiid and Tobias. But this game might look like it might blow out. So let's go to, oh, maybe not. Let's go to the Toronto side first um, before we talk about that again. Fred Van Vliet out. Scotty Barnes out. OG and Nubi out. Precious Achua out. Justin Champagne out, Goran Dragic, Aaron Baines, Macaul Malachi Flynn, David Johnson all out. I think Bonga is go. Oh, he just got placed into protocols too. So I'm pretty sure he got placed into protocols. Oh wow, he just he cleared it. So if Ken plays, obviously they're gonna get another center. Bumps down Chris Boucher. If Gary Trent and Siakam are in, bumps down everyone. If they're out, Utah is definitely worth the play again. Sfi definitely worth the play again. Um, if Cambridge comes back, it'll probably kill DJ Wilson's minutes as well. So I'm liking Utah and Sfi. Um, Banton's okay. He had a terrible shooting night. If he starts at point guard again, yes, I do like him. If he doesn't, I'm off. So with that being said, if um, you believe this game stays close, if Siakam and Gary Trent are in, then yes, I believe the Philadelphia side is playable. But still, at these prices, I will not be touching them tonight. The prices are just too high for, for not an elite matchup. Um, when you have this matchup, the Lakers against Houston, where uh, Houston's getting their guys back and Lakers are still the same. Uh, still butt, still ass. But they're in a good spot here. Uh, LeBron James, 11.3K, has been playing phenomenal. Um, I love him again. Uh, without Anthony Davis, because um, we have Bazemore out, Rondo out, Ariza out, none, and Reeves are still out. Um, we did get Avery Bradley and Malik Monk back, which is nice. We lost Isaiah Thomas, which sucks, I guess, for him. Um, but appreciate you, IT. Uh, appreciate your second stint, but obviously it wasn't working out. Um, yeah, LeBron's good here. Carmelo is interesting here. Um, if he gets the, the same run again, obviously we can't predict that. Um, but... He's been getting a good amount of run the past couple games. Uh, he's worth a GPP play, um, especially in a sort of revenge game, quotes, um, against Houston. Um, Malik Monk, very interesting as well. I love the play. Um, he's going to have to play big minutes, especially if these guys continue to sit, which they look like they are. Um, Malik Monk in play, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James. Um, and then Russell Westbrook is also in play. Sorry. Uh, Russell Westbrook is also in play tomorrow. Um, could be a sneaky pay up. Uh, definitely. On the Houston side, John Wall out. Jay Sean Tate out. Kenyon Martin Jr. out. Garrison Matthews out. DJ Augustine out. They do get Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green back tomorrow. So Lakers will have a tougher matchup than uh, how Charlotte just manhandled Houston tonight. Um and I like this spot. I like this spot for both teams. Obviously, it's going to be tougher to play the Houston side just because they're getting men back and their guys are priced up. Um, yeah, I like the Lakers side a lot. Um, and, but that game environment's nice. New York at Minnesota next game from the New York side. Rose is out. Noel is out. Daniel House Jr. is out. And then I think we have Ken, Kevin Knox as questionable. And Jericho Sims as questionable. And then Miles McBride is also questionable. So, with that being said, um, no Rose. Uh, barely played last game. 25 minutes. 
Quickly's back. Oh yeah, Quickly's back. So that kind of sucks. Um, everyone's kind of pricey here with Quickly being back and um, active and uh, playing. Kemba Walker takes a uh, big shot at usage, at minutes. Quentin Grimes played phenomenal Christmas Day, but he's also going to get a shot a bump down in minutes. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't like any of these guys. Um, yeah, not liking too many here at the moment. We got to see the news tomorrow. Um, so Minnesota, holy cow. I would watch for news. There was an error, I guess, with the starters, I guess probable starters for tomorrow already, saying that Russell, Edwards, Towns, Vanderbilt, Beverly are back. Obviously, that isn't the case with what you see right here, um, but I would definitely monitor news tomorrow. Some could be back, some could not be, just like how Trey came back today, Trey Young. So um, I don't want to speak on this right now. If they're all out again, the same guys that were um, playing today are going to get the same amount of run, I believe. Um, what's his name? Nathan Knight, probably going to be a top value play again. Um, Patrick Beverly, I believe, will come back. So uh, dudes like uh, Noel and McLaughlin get bumped down. Beasley's still very nice. McDaniel's still very nice. Um, Layman gets a bump down, a Koji bump down, but Nathan Knight should still see bulk of the minutes at center. He fouled out tonight, so he could have had a bigger night if he wanted to. Next, we have the Cavs at the Pelicans. Damn. Jared Allen out, Mobley out, Sexton out, Chetty Osman out, Windler and Stevens at Davis out as well. I believe Isaac Cora will come back tomorrow. He's been out for conditioning. Should be okay. <laughs> Excuse me. By now. Um, it's a good matchup for the Cla for the Cavs, but the Pelicans just lost Brandon Ingram. Kind of sucks. Um, it's going to have to be competitive for this game to be playable. Darius Garland, way too expensive at 9.9K. Kevin Love, if the centers are still out, love him at 6.7. Ricky Rubio, good matchup here, 6.4. And, uh, I mean, these guys are, are, are priced right, but it's a good game environment for them. Um, this game just needs to stay close. For them to pay off their salary and uh, like I mentioned these two dudes right here I like the most here Pelican's side Ingram's doubtful I believe Jonas is probable Josh Hart should be questionable so like like I said um, those are the main guys for this team if um, Josh Hart were to sit I don't like their chances too much against this Cleveland team who's who's very very strong um, Hernan Gomez unplayable now with Valanciunas back watch him go off for some reason but um, yeah, I mean, with no Brandon Ingram, Garrett Temple stepped in the starting lineup. He played phenomenal. Um, I don't like him here, honestly, because Cleveland's is such a tough team. Um, I, I do think one of these guys are going to go off, but I'm not sure which one yet, and I'm just going to avoid it at the moment because, um, I bet you we're going to get some weird news tomorrow. Denver at Golden State next game. Murray out, Porter Jr. out, Dozier and Marcus Howard out while we have Aaron Gordon questionable, Mark uh, Monte Morris probable, and Bull Bull questionable. So this game basically rides on Aaron Gordon news. Uh, Jokic will be basically another f feed Jokic the ball night um, if uh, Aaron Gordon sits. He has 60-70 ceiling. With uh, around 50 floor, maybe 45 if this game blows out. Um, but without Aaron Gordon, I do like Jokic, Will Barton, Monte Morris. And I do think they go a little small tomorrow. So they, they'll play like Will Barton at the four or something like that. And they'll have like Campazzo, um, Rivers, and someone else in. Maybe Devon Reed um, with along with Monte Morris. So we'll see what their lineup is tomorrow. But that's what I'm expecting if Aaron Gordon's out. On the Golden State side, oh, damn. Draymond Green is out. So this game's not even going to blow out. No way. Um, Jordan Poole's out tomorrow. I believe Andrew Wiggins is coming back. So he's going to be um, very popular. 6.8K with no Draymond Green, no Jordan Poole. Um, Damian Lee's out as well. And, um, yeah, I believe that Porter Jr. should start. If we see Wiggins move to the two, we'll see Porter Jr. start at the three. Um, if not, we'll see Porter Jr. start at the four <laughs> with uh, Kevon Looney. So I like Otto tomorrow. 
Gary Payton, if he starts, but Wiggins and Curry are going to main that, basically man that entire game. So that's why Jokic is definitely in play. OKC at Sacramento rounds out the slate. Baisley out. Jerome Robinson Earl out. Pokushevsky out. Trey Mann out. And Diakati is out as well. So we saw them start um, Aaron Wiggins last game. Shot very well. 8 for 10. Obviously, that's not too um, sustainable. Um, but he is worth a play at 3.4K as a punt. I do like him at that price. Um, he should see bulk of the minutes there as well with them missing all these guys. Um, with that being said, uh, Kynrick Williams is definitely in play tomorrow with them missing these guys. Um, Shea is going to have to man the game. Josh Giddy's worth it. Uh, Lou Dort at 5.5, definitely in play as well. Um, he might be my favorite out of these guys, actually. He has um, the lowest price out of those three, and he has sort of the same ceiling. He can put up 40, 45 tonight in this matchup against Sacramento, and uh, he'd probably be the lowest owned between Giddy and Shea. So we'll see um, about that tomorrow. Um, on the Sacramento side, Davion Mitchell out. Alex Lane, I believe, is questionable, and that's basically it. So they're becoming more and more healthy. Um, don't like their prices here, to be honest. Uh, Halliburton, 8.9, full fade. Darren Fox against OKC, it's not bad, but all the dudes are back. I would fade. Terrence Davis is back. Buddy healed, fade. Yeah, I mean, I'm just avoiding this entire Sacramento side, besides maybe Rashawn Holmes, but we don't even know how many minutes he's going to get. He got 10 last game. Everyone's back for centers like Metu, Thompson, Bagley. Len might be back. Damian Jones had a career night. Not a career night. I, I'm sorry. But he had a very good night. And they're just all over the place. So I'm probably going to avoid this spot. And so, yeah, that kind of rounds out this slate. Rounds up the end of this NBA DFS DraftKings picks video for December 28th, 2021. If you guys like the video, please go ahead uh, click that like button and also subscribe if you're new to the DFS Karma YouTube channel for more daily media content like this. Um, I appreciate you guys all for watching as always. It's been your boy Tristan aka Sorata DFS and I'm out. Peace.